Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. In today's world, being able to act undetected is vital to the success of military operations. Thanks to submarines, most of such strategic and covert missions are made possible. Billions of dollars are therefore spent in producing these massive submarines to prepare them for these extremely important duties on the rough seas. In Sweden, submarine manufacturer Saab Kakums is producing a new class of air-independent propulsion submarines in one of its factories. The company's expertise is based on more than 100 years of experience, during which it has delivered seven submarine classes across three continents. The company brings workers from different areas together in cross-functional teams to develop solutions for state-of-the-art vessels. The team uses a completely digitized workflow founded on model-based definition to store parts and information together to keep product data secure. Once ready, submarine components are tested rigorously to make sure they will keep sailors safe as well as meet the needs of the Navy. In what Saab refers to as one of the largest hyperbaric test chambers in the world, large components are tested at high pressures that equal a depth of over 5,200 feet. Before completing the submarine, it is tradition to host what is called a keel laying ceremony. Oftentimes, the initials of the ship's sponsor are welded onto a steel plate that is installed in the ship. Once the submarine has been entirely constructed and undergone all of its testing and sea trials, commissioning takes place. Of course, the submarine must first be deemed capable of joining its designated fleet and performing its missions up to standard. At the commissioning event, it is expected that the ship's sponsors are in attendance, as well as leading dignitaries, public officials, and the media. That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that... Once the ship's pennant is raised and the ship is officially manned by its crew, it officially becomes a United States Navy ship. Submarines are not perfect, however, and will need occasional maintenance. To do this, the vessels typically use what is called a dry dock. This is a narrow basin that can be drained of water to allow for ship inspection and repairs. This can mean anything from routine maintenance to major repairs and overhauling components of the submarine. Midlife upgrades are also done in a dry dock, including the updating of technology and combat systems upgrades and general overhauls. To reach the dry dock, large vessels often need the help of a tugboat to assist them in maneuvering. These tugboats are designed with the purpose of pushing and towing large barges, boats, or ships. 
Some also provide a submarine rescue service if needed. Each tugboat has a different requirement based on its docking location, which can include anything from port traffic volume and types of ships the tugboat will be towing within its domain. Once the submarine is ready to return to sea again, the dry dock is flooded with water. Just as with docking, undocking a ship is complex and requires careful planning and teamwork across the entire shipyard. A tugboat tows the ship out of the flooded dry dock, similar to how it was brought in to help the ship fully undock. Then, it is ready to rejoin its fleet. Though sailors may be ready to get back out to sea, life on board a submarine is anything but normal for the average person. United States Naval Fast Attack or Guided Missile Submarines are typically deployed for about six months, while ballistic missile submarines are sent out for three. Navy submarine sailors are typically attached to a submarine for about three years. They must take on shore duty for two to three years after that. Sailors who work on a submarine have no access to cellular service or even have windows. But many do get to enjoy excellent food. For the crew of the nuclear-powered Virginia-class submarine USS South Dakota, the food is described as delicious. A crew of seven culinary specialists aboard the ship is responsible for the meals. They usually begin preparation four hours before each mealtime. Some of the meals include pizza, omelets, bread pudding, and giant cookie dessert bars. The culinary team feeds the crew of 135 submariners three to four times daily for every day the ship is out on deployment. Even the mess hall, which is where the crew dines, is decorated to make it more enjoyable for the team. Though parts of the deployment may be enjoyable, it is also tricky especially when crew members spend weeks submerged under the water with little to do but work and sleep. Submarines are often described as cramped, with small halls for walking and small beds for sleeping in. Work shifts change every six to eight hours on board a submarine, and each day crew members do a different job. This requires that all sailors on board the ship must be organized. Submarines must make their own water and oxygen, and how long a submarine can operate often depends on how much food it can carry. At the center of the submarine is the control room, 
both in a physical and operational sense. From the moment a submarine heads out to sea, it is constantly in operation, and everyone must understand their job. Everyone from a sailor to a commander has an important job. These massive submarines, therefore, do not depend on their robust mechanisms alone, but also on the services of dedicated sailors who usually have to stay for many months underwater in the discharge of their duties. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.